Hi, guys. I'm. Can I just start by saying, like, I'm almost. Um, I'm a little bit emotional, India, seeing your face because I talked to your mom months, months ago, maybe a year ago. And, um, you know, as a mom myself, I just had so much empathy and um, fear. And I had followed your story in particular. Like I kept trying to find more information on more information to see how you were doing. And um, I went down a rabbit hole of literally doing my, like my own reach. Cause I'm like, I need to know she's okay. Yeah. And your mom is such a badass warrior. I'm so proud of you, That's Gavin, because you. you did it and you did it, India. You guys have to, let me start with the normal question. Okay. Has this experience brought you guys even closer together? Yes. I mean, I, ah, uh, you're going to make me cry now. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm, I'm holding back my water. Okay, okay. So. Hold on. Let me get myself together. Um, I just couldn't be happier for what I have in my life now. And honestly, like that is all because of what my mother did for me. And she fought for me to have my life back in a future that I didn't even see for myself. And I mean, what, what a gift. I just can't even explain like, no, that's the most amazing gift that you can give someone. And the fact that it comes from my own mom and it's like, I get a new start. I get a, a new chance. Right. And, and Catherine, how, how well do you sleep now at night? <laughs> right now it's a little hard for us to sleep as well because of all this press and having to relive all this. True. True. But, I mean, we sleep, we sleep better. We now. sleep better. Yeah. Well, let me tell everybody um, why you're here. There's a new four-part documentary series that follows the story of India's her insane, incredible, dark journey through the criminal world of Nexium. You, you guys know that we've talked about them. Um, I'm so glad because her mom was here um, with her book a while ago talking about trying to get her daughter out of this insane sex cult. And um, I just, I literally would pray. I would like, please, please let India come home. And now she's here with her mom and they have a documentary documentary that I cannot wait to watch. It's called Seduced Inside the Nexium Cult, Sunday nights at nine o'clock on Stars. Um, what made you guys want to do this documentary that I think is so important to get out there? Well, can I just first, yeah, first say, um, I basically told India's story without her consent at first. And then when she came home and she wasn't ready to talk, she would give me like little scripts and say, mom, this is all you're allowed to say to the press. And I would go and do my interviews with a I just wanted privacy. And she, and I would Remember like, that. all I can say, and I'm reading it verbatim. And then there comes a moment where it's time for me to actually step back. And she was ready to, um, to take hold of her own narrative. And, and she's ready to speak. Like, time for me to be quiet and this is her story this is not I'm not a producer this is completely in this story uh, yeah, and India no, I, why was it important for you to share this I mean for the longest time I thought that I could just run away from mountains and hide from this forever and that it would just pass by me and I could continue my life and I think the longer that I separated myself from Nexium and actually started to prioritize myself and my own healing I realized that this should sorry I, no, you can swear. Shit, oh. shit, shit. So, the, uh, that this this shit just doesn't go away. Yeah. Like trauma and experiences like what I went through and many other women go through, sadly, don't just dissolve. You have to process them. And it was sort of like my way of going all in on my own healing and just taking back my story and taking back my voice because I had had that taken from me for so long and I I wanted it back. I mean, I've been in, I don't want to say ap at all similar, but I've been in relationships that were cult-like where I, I, I lost myself. I had no original thoughts. Everything was so warped and wrapped around someone else's energy, their life. I was gaslit, all those things. What was the catalyst, India, that made you, because I know your mom was trying, um, the, then it blew up in the press about this cult. That still didn't do it. But what was that catalyst that made you say, holy shit, I need to get out? I mean, honestly, I wish that I could say that it happened earlier, but it didn't. And I was in way too long. I mean, it wasn't until after Allison was arrested that I started to feel like, wow, 
maybe I'm next. And that was really scary. And it still didn't pop me out, if you can believe it. I mean, it's embarrassing to say so, but I was so saturated with the Nexium doctrine and just having been in there since I was 19. And this is years of compounding right. information from people who I trusted and I considered authority figures. So it wasn't until actually my mom introduced me to a woman named Diane Ben Scooter, who is a deprogrammer that I was able to begin the conversation, which is what I really needed to have. And it was a gentle incremental process of just opening my mind to questioning. Okay, can I add yeah. Jenny? Um, so the yeah, first, but... first time that India agreed to meet with me was in mediation. And this lady was there. We're sitting in a hotel in New York and she, India steps in and literally this woman had to translate for us. We were not speaking the same language. And yeah. while we're sitting there, and both of us are so, and I'm like, I can't so believe frustrated because then I'm so nervous to see my own daughter. Like I can't even believe. And she yeah. was feeling the same thing. My phone starts ringing off yeah. the hook. Claire Bronfman was arrested while we were sitting together mediating and three other high ranking cult members. And I'm like, oh my God. It was unbelievable. Scary, right? Terrifying yeah. because- yeah. India, I would have been shitting myself going, am I, am I really next? Well, like I will tell you, I mean, one of the things that was most scary to me after the fact, I mean, once I left Nexium was the realization that I wasn't afraid. Like I didn't feel fear appropriately anymore. And that was because right. of what they did in the group. And it's, it almost feels like science fiction when I'm talking about it now, because I don't feel that way anymore. Like I, I have my emotions back. I mean, tenfold, sometimes like, I wish that they would dial down, but I, uh, I think for me, that was one of the more disturbing things because that's how he was able to get people to do incriminating things, things that were hurting them. I mean, how it's hard to explain, but it's the truth. And that is how these people operate. They will change your brain because of for their own perverted desires. And it's, and it's slow yeah. and it's methodic. It's that's so that, true. and that's the yeah, part that I wanted see. to get across in the documentary was that this isn't something that just happens overnight. You don't go, Oh, I'd love to join a cult today and get abused. Right. I mean, like, please, nobody feels that way. And so I wanted to make sure that people understood that this was slow process of grooming and indoctrination. And it was coercion because we didn't know that that's, that was the end game. When they sat down to create this horrific cult, um, I forgot the other woman's name that Nancy. was it. What, what was her name, Catherine? Nancy Salzman. Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, when when Nancy and Keith sat down to create this, did does Nancy did Nancy know what she was creating with him? Did they both know all along, or did it grow into a sadistic? Cult. You know, I have, I have a, my own opinion, but it's really just speculation because I don't know. And I wasn't there. It's way, it predates me, but I think that anything that Keith was involved in was ultimately for his own perverted desires, mm -hmm. because that's what he did with all of his companies. Even from the time that he started CBI, he was abusing and exploiting people. So it wouldn't put I wouldn't put it past him to say that he actually designed this with those intentions. Wow. I don't know about this again. You, you don't know about Nancy. Seduced is the name of the docuseries Inside the Nexium Cult. It's on Sunday nights at nine o'clock on Stars. Um, and he also, I mean, the way he made women, period, go like lure other women in. It was supposed to be about empowering women and it's destroying women and it was women hurting other women. Yeah. That was also so hard. It's like you guys were so brainwashed into thinking you're helping your fellow woman. And that, that has to be hard to heal too. I mean, these yeah. are these were good. Most of the people that came into DOS, mm -hmm. I mean, specifically DOS were well-intentioned women. These were people that wanted to grow and wanted to be better. And they were deceived from the beginning because nobody explained that this perverted man was at the center of this group. And... Uh, that's, that's something that's very hard to deal with is just kind of right. like that, that kind of betrayal. And I, but I hope you know that there's a lot of us women out there that look at you and your story and these other women go, I could have totally been in that. Like, 
me moving to LA when I was 19, being a little lost soul, wanted to clip out of Catholicism and wanted to grow spiritually and self just empower myself. I could have easily been in your shoes. And so that's why it's true. There's like no judgment. And everyone I talk to just, they get that. And I want you to know, there's a ton of us that get it. Cause we go, sister, I would have been right there with you. I would have had that fucking branding. I would have had the same experience. Um, Oh, go ahead. No, I mean, I thank you for saying that because one of the main objectives in the docuseries was to make sure that this was relatable and it's an unusual circumstance, but like you said, you don't have to be in a cult to be coerced. You can be in an abusive re- relationship. You can be in a fucked up work dynamic. I mean, there are so many other ways that we're being manipulated that we're unaware of that I wish that we would have had these warning signs and known these things before. Well, one of the things to add that's really relevant is that India was compromised. Mm-hmm. So she was yes. required to give damn oh, ruinous no. blackmail, which they call collateral, in order to gain admission to this inner, like the secret group. And it was Alison Mack, who she respected, who was a superior in the Nixium, bigger company. So once she'd given this ruinous blackmail, then she was told about more about the group, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not like it was a voluntary choice. Her choice was removed. And I think it's important for people to understand like the level of deception and how compromised these young women were that they once they said yes, they were in and they held them in there because they were terrified they were going to release this information. Right. And of they, course, there wasn't a choice afterwards to be like, you know what? I don't like this information. Can I have my stuff back? No, it was, because you're if, doomed. if you left, they would release it. I mean, that was the threat. That was the threat of the program. And we were people with empathy. I mean, nobody wants to go and hurt somebody else. I mean, that's, I actually say this in the, in the docu series that we ended up just giving more and more naked photos because mm-hmm. it, the burden laid on us as opposed right. to as, as other people, instead of other people. And it was just like, I mean, it was really scary. I mean, it was unbelievably non-consensual. I can't even. Right. Take- you know, to this day, these young women still don't know who has their blackmail material really so it's just out there and they have to live with that shadow the group has it the The group has has it it. i mean i know that the fbi has some of it i know that that doesn't bother me but it's the yeah no i mean mean, there's people within nexium who still have collateral so so everyone has not woken up out of this cult Mm -hmm. wow i know can you believe that is this, this is a question that I'm really interested in how you're going to answer this. Cause I don't know how I would answer it. Is Allison a victim? Mm-hmm. We have, lot. yeah, we have different opinions about that. Obviously my mother is more protective of me and sees, sees it differently, but I think anybody who interacted with Keith was a victim because they came in there and they left worse. Regardless, I mean, look, Claire Bronfman's right. in jail for seven years. Mm-hmm. So even if Alison Mack maybe was a fragile person before who could have been more susceptible to manipulation, I don't know. I still consider her a victim of Keith Raniere in a certain sense, but she took it way too far. I mean, she took it far beyond a lot of other people. And that says something about her. And she has to deal with that. I mean, just learning the fact that the branding initials were him and her, I was like, uh, oh my God, that part shook me. Cause I'm like, she, cause I, I saw him as this like evil monster and all these poor, you know, women that are, and men in this, you know, cult that are seduced by this man. But, um, to learn that she was using her initials to brand scared me. Well, that she I took herself say, that far. I will say that it's actually just his initials. Yeah. Oh, it is? I thought it was yeah. both. No, because it, it's K A R, which is Keith Allen Ranieri. And that's, he's such a narcissist, he wouldn't even, you know, include That Alice. makes me feel a little bit better. I mean, that makes me feel a little bit better. I'm glad because it's, it's not that all those other women were a part of creating it, though. I mean, I don't want to let anybody off the hook. They were involved every step of the way. The first line women in DOS knew exactly what the brand was. Everybody else was told a lie. 
And the first line women knew that he was the head of the organ, head of the secret society, that it was not a women's empowerment group at mm-hmm. all. Wow. Does it, and you know what's crazy is watching um, and w- watching your story, Catherine, about how like the, the authorities would not get involved. The state's attorneys would not get involved. It wasn't until you got loud enough in the media to, to shake them. And India, I was I was really wanting to know when your mom was speaking out publicly, when even when she was on my show, I was like, what is India thinking? Wh- where is she in her stages of waking up, not waking up? Can you give me the dialogue that was going through your head when you were hearing your mom and everybody else talk about it? Um, it was it was complicated because I was under an enormous amount of pressure from the higher ranking members to I bet. credit my mom. And Keith himself would tell me that my mother was a psychopath trying to hurt me and the group. And so I was afraid. And I also felt betrayed by my mom because I couldn't understand why she was doing what she was doing. Cause I was being told from the inside that this was all ridiculous and fake and that she was being over dramatic and we were all fine. And so a part of me wanted to believe that. So I did, but I also knew that this was my mom. So there was a tiny piece of me that was questioning, but it would get, you know, bombarded by all of the other information from people who I trusted. Right. Now for, for people that are listening, what are, and you both can speak on this as a mother and, and you, Andy, as it going through the experience, what can moms and what can women do uh, to see red flags that this could be happening, not only within a cult, but let's include cult like relationships. Very good. What are some red flags? Uh, well, to really be aware of the, um, the characteristics of predators. Mm-hmm whether they be Jeffrey Epstein's or the Weinstein's. Or the, the, the Kelly's. Yeah, exactly. The playbook is pretty slim. Um, <laughs> it is. There, there is a seduction strategy that they lure girls in. They offer them the moon. They make them feel incredibly special. They, um, you know, form a trust relationship. They often use women to form the initial trust and then they use those women to bring you in. And then once you're hooked emotionally, they make you dependent on them and they start to break you down. And I think the message is- And isolation. Uh, and isolate, isol- yes, that's a very good point. Isolating you from your family, mm-hmm. pulling you away. Yeah. And um, they isolate you how, India, so people can understand that. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of like you're physically and emotionally isolated because you don't really have access to your friends and family. And if you do, it's relatively monitored or controlled. Um, And you're also, I mean, in my case, I was isolated in Albany. I was commanded to move to Albany to live with Allison Mack by Keith, which I didn't know. And from then my DOS experience just got progressively more intense and painful. Uh, so I there's a lot of red flags that people should look for. Ugh. People I mean, being super possessive, controlling. Those are two, two important. Over, overly flattering you. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that I wish I would have known when I was growing up that I could have looked for. And I actually, part of my own healing was to write. So I ended up writing a book and it's called Still Learning. It's on Audible. And it really just takes you through all of those red flags using my experience, like the how to avoid these things. I'm so proud of you. That is amazing. And it's available right now. It actually goes on sale on Keith's sentencing, which I was really proud of that timing. It was like an extra, mm. but right, right. Uh, I, it's on pre-sale right now. It's horrible. <laughs> I mean, how about the, I just read somewhere that he's trying to get his uh, case Mm -hmm. uh, redone because uh, I don't know, some people were, they felt being threatened who was going to be part of his defense. Where, what do you say to that? That's really sad. Um, It's actually been something that's uh, been bothering me a lot these last couple of days when I read, read those documents. And it's just, just shows you how dangerous indoctrination is because these people are hurting themselves and they're doing it in service of Keith and they can't even see. Um, They're committing perjury and they're on other crimes. So I hope and I I pray that they Wake wake up and that they can have their lives back because I know that 
there's so much more for them once they leave, but they can't see that now. I mean, talk about a, a new purpose in your life, India, of how many, what you've had to go through, but to help so many people now, so many women, like you said, I wish I had these uh, red flags, you know, but now you're sharing them. And I think it's really important, moms, daughters, aunts, anyone that's listening to mm -hmm. listen to their story, to watch this documentary to get her audio book and plug it one more time. What's the name of it? Still learning. Very appropriate Still learning. for me. <laughs> Very appropriate. Very appropriate. The, the uh, docu-series is called Seduced Inside the Nexium Cult Sunday nights at nine o'clock on Stars, India and Catherine Oxenberg. What a pleasure. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have a big old fat cry tonight knowing that you're safe in your mom's arms. I adore you both. This feels a little dreamy because I literally was like praying. I, would, I was praying for you, India. I was like, you were on my little meditation Buddha. I was chanting. Oh Thank you. Oh. So, 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 that's so there's cute. so many of us that are so grateful and mom, good job. Good job, Catherine. I'm proud of you for being a strong warrior because I know it's not easy. And thank you guys for helping heal the world and, you know, future generations because this will have an impact. I promise. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I, hopefully I'll talk to you soon. So keep me updated on anything. Okay. Yes. Okay. Lots of love to you both. Bye. You too. Bye.